I wanted to try something different than what my other videos are and the rest of you guys might find this interesting. I was kind of curious if I took a camera and I recorded in 1080p 60 frames a second and most cameras do that now. But I was also curious what happens if I produce that into 4K for YouTube. So I'm going to record in 1080p but I'm going to produce it as 4K. And how clear would it look or how good would it look? I also want to take this experiment one position further. I want to shoot it with three cameras on 1080 60 frames a second. All three cameras are Canon. Okay? The camera on my left is a Canon EOS R with a what is it? With a 24 by 105 lens on it. And by the way, this here is just a cup. I have a link in the bottom if you want to pick that up. I thought it was kind of cool. Super cheap. But um, the EOS R camera sells for around $2,000. And with the actual 24 by 105 lens, if you buy it in a kit, you get a little cheaper with the camera. But if you buy it separate, it's around 1000 So you're talking a $3,000 setup with the Canon EOS R and the 24 by 105 setup. A roundabout idea. The Canon 80D is what I've got in the center looking at me. And this camera has an 18 by 55 I think kit lens on it. I could be wrong. But I'll put it in the, in, in, in the video here to show you. Now Canon 80D, you can get them used all day long for five, six hundred bucks, maybe cheaper. I mean Casey Neistat used the Canon 80D for years is what he did. And the Canon 80D is also recording in 1080p. Now I've also got over to the side here a Canon G7X Mark II. It's a point and shoot camera. A lot of times I grab that when I need something light. And basically there's no lenses, no nothing. I think it sells for around five, six hundred bucks. Screen flips up. So is there any difference in the quality of video? Now what we're checking here is not the audio. The audio I've got going into my Zoom F4 into my main camera. But I'm looking at the video. How does the video look? Now I'm not going to do LUTs and all this editing to try and match them up. I don't want to do that. I want to do it straight out of camera and I'm curious what this is going to turn out like and I thought I'd share it with you guys. So we've got three cameras here. We've got a high-end camera of $3,000. We've got a medium camera, Canon 80D sitting in the middle. And we've got a Canon G7X Mark II, a point and shoot on the right. Now there's something to consider about these cameras. Okay, the G7X Mark II camera has a real tiny sensor and a really tiny sensor. I mean, you're really not getting that much in the way of image quality. For video, I would think. Like I said, I'm not sure until I put it on YouTube how it's going to look. Canon 80D, I've used it for years. Love that camera to death. It's bulletproof. I've had it out in the pouring rain. I mean, I've just put that camera through its paces and it's still working. The EOS R. Much bigger lens. Like, I can show you just by looking at these, okay? Put it this way. This goes across the Canon 80D lens. This goes across the EOS R lens. It's a much bigger lens. Almost twice as big. Let's in a lot more light. So let's say you're just making YouTube videos. Can you get away with making YouTube videos with a 1080p camera and can you produce it in 4K? And would anybody know the difference? Well, that's what I'm going to find out, but I'm not only just finding it out, I'm finding it out with three different types of cameras here. And you guys are checking this out too. Now, I'm not sure how this is going to look. Maybe the $3,000 camera will look better. I don't know. But we're going to see, and I'm going to line up the, the video and everything, and I'm going to swap in between while I'm chatting here so you can look at it. 
and you can determine. Now I can't get everyone dead on me. Like my little camera's kind of off to the side a little bit. But we're looking at video. The EOS R, the mirrorless camera, it's huge. I mean the lens is huge and everything. Now the camera body's smaller, but the lens is huge. But why did I buy the EOS R over top of the Canon 80D or even a G7X? Well, I do amateur photography in my spare time is what I do. And EOS R has that, you know, that great big lens, okay? And it lets in more light. So as it gets closer to dark, I can get those great shots of deer or elk or whatever I'm shooting. Now the Canon 80D, because it's a crop sensor, things are pulled in closer. Not really a big deal when you're taking video, because you know you can adjust your lens in and out, and for video it's just fine. You can even pick up really cheap lenses for the Canon 80D. I mean, 100 bucks, 200 bucks. I mean, there's some cheap lenses out there if you look around. Not an L class, but good enough for vlogging, good enough for YouTube. Heck yeah. Okay. The G7X Mark II. I have made a lot of videos on that thing. I really have. The screen flips up. Sometimes I'm sitting in my truck. I put a little mini tripod on it. I set it up on my dash. And I just start talking into it. I don't even put an external microphone in it. But with the Canon 80D, I have to put an external microphone on it. For it to sound good with quality. So I'm kind of curious what the video is going to look like this. And this looks really weird. I got three cameras pointing at me. I feel like I'm some movie star here. <laughs> is there going to be a difference with all three cameras when I put the 1080p in the power director and I produce it in the 4k are they all going to look the same now you got to ask yourself if they all look the same then you don't need some big expensive camera basically what you need is a camera that does 1080p and the video looks pretty clear and then you just got to up your editing game, maybe add some LUTs to it, change the background a bit, and you've got something. I'm thinking they're all going to look the same. When I'm dead. Now, I'm not going to edit them with LUTs or anything, but I think they're good. the video is going to look fine. I don't think it's going to matter if it's a $3,000 camera, a $600 camera, or another $500 camera. I don't think it's going to matter. And I think when I produce this thing from 1080 60p into 4K, I don't even think YouTube's going to know. I think YouTube's going to slap the 4K beside it and say, yep, yeah, it's a 4K video, when it's really not. See, they always tell you it's better to take the size of a video and downsize than to upsize, basically. So if my video's in 6K and then I downsize it to 4K and then I produce it, apparently it's going to be a lot clearer and a lot cooler looking. I don't know how true that is. I do know this about YouTube. If your video says 4K beside it, you will come up higher in the search. You are given extra props for putting your video up in 4K. Why do you think everybody's doing it? So, if a person can record in 1080p, produce in 4K, YouTube sees it as 4K, well, then why isn't everybody doing it? Everybody wants to be, you know, they're all acting like they want to be these big time film people or something. All you're worried about is, how does it look? If you're doing it for YouTube, look okay? It looks okay. You need to actually spend more time with your editing than thinking that you're going to buy some big $3,000 camera and think it's going to make a big difference. It's not going to make a difference. Not at all. I really believe when I actually produce all three of these cameras into 4K, they're all going to look the same. I don't think there's going to be a difference. Now, I could be wrong. I ain't going to know until I get it up on YouTube. But once I get it up there, we're going to see. Is there that big of a difference, really? Now, the audio is not going to change with all of them. The audio is going to be the same right across the board. Okay, what we're looking at is the video. From a really expensive camera to a medium camera to a cheaper camera. I mean, you can pick up cameras that are like 60, 70 bucks that have 1080, 60p. And they would probably look the same. No different than what I did here with these three cameras. So does a person need to spend that much money or should they actually be thinking about 
maybe I should buy two or three cheap cameras because now I can line my cameras up for different angles and get a much better shot on YouTube of what I'm looking for instead of dumping all my money into one camera. That makes a lot more sense, I would think. So I think I've talked long enough. I think you've all seen the video of the three cameras and how it's going to look. And uh, I'm kind of curious what YouTube's going to do to this when I actually go up instead of down with the 4K. Is it going to look grainy? Is it going to look, it's not going to be usable? I don't know. But like I said, all three cameras are 1080, 60 frames a second. Now when you shoot in 1080, 60 frames a second, you can do slow motion too. Okay. And now, I'm going to take these videos, and I'm going to put them, and I'm going to produce them in 4K and put them on YouTube. You let me know in the comments. I'm going to flash on the screen as I switch cameras, and I'm going to spend some time editing this. But you tell me in the comments which one you think is better, or do you think, hey, any camera I get that does 1080 and 60 frames a second is going to look just fine. And that's where, oh, by the way, the EOS R is a full frame camera. It's huge. It takes in more pixels. The Canon 80D is a crop sensor, which pulls you in closer. The Canon G7X Mark II, much tinier sensor. So we got three different sensor sizes here. Okay, so let's get this in the Power Director. Let's get this on YouTube and look forward to your comments. I really am looking forward to see what you guys got to say about this one. And uh, if you want to see more things like this, give me a thumbs up. I got all kinds of equipment I can do tests on to help you guys out. Uh, let me know. At any rate, guys, I'll catch you on the next one.